We are back in Okinawa Arena here in Japan. And it is the host nation getting set to match up against Venezuela here in the classification round. But there's a lot on the line for Japan here. Welcome inside. I'm Despina Barton alongside FIBA Hall of Famer Andrew Gaze. Venezuela looking for their first victory. And they have an opportunity to play spoiler because Japan with a, another win or possibly two. And they've sealed their fate to Paris in the 2024 Olympics. That's right. It's a big occasion for Japan in front of their home fans. And they're up against a team that's had some problems. Started the tournament in real positive fashion against Slovenia in that first half where they just were lights out. Had nine threes in the first quarter of uh, this campaign but since then it's been some slim pickings and they've copped a couple of heartbreaking losses along the way and if they're going to cause an upset they've got some some issues to address they're down a couple of players Gregory Vargas the veteran of the team 37 year old he was back there all the way back to the Rio Olympics so he's a long time campaigner was also part of their 2019 campaign he's not going to be there neither is Michael Carrera who is a bit of an enforcer for this Venezuela team so they're, they're down a couple of men but they still got enough talent to challenge this very strong and impressive full of emotion Japanese team and they have the home crowd on their side. Tom, Tom Hovas has gotten the best out of this unit. We saw them two games ago come back and upset Finland, earn their first ever victory over a European squad, 98-88. They played Australia tight two nights ago, and they're starting to put things together here as they get set for Venezuela. Oh, my word, they are. And Josh Hawkinson has been the main man. He's averaging 23 points a game. And that is good enough to be the fourth leading scorer in the competition. And he's shooting it at a very healthy 70%. 70%, that's right. Does his lot of work around the basket. But uh, Yude Baba, he's been one of the standouts for Japan as well. And Yute Watanabe, the NBA star, he's placed currently with the Phoenix Suns, spent last year with the Nets. He's been pretty good as well. But uh, this team here, they can shoot the ball. They shoot as many twos as they do threes. They love to shoot it from the three-point line. Very efficient from twos. And it's going to be an exciting contest with a lot at stake for Japan. A look here at the slate for today. Finland defeating Cape Verde, 177. And then we see Japan and Venezuela going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Every point counts. Every victory will carry on here in the classification round. And specifically for Japan, it's a race to be the best. After the first round was complete. And before we get started here, we will stand for the national anthems first for Venezuela. And now for the home team and host nation, Japan.
a packed house here inside Okinawa Arena, Japan. And Kauch, Tom Hovas, they're shaking hands with Fernando Duro from Venezuela. All the friendly hellos before the competition begins and the team's meeting here at midcourt. This is going to be the fourth contest in seven days for these two teams. We are in the classification round here. Japan, though, fighting because they want to make sure they seal up their picture and their fate when it comes to the Paris 2024 games. And this is a look at the officiating crew here this evening. Egypt, USA, and Bosnia all represented. And it's going to be a tall task because this is going to get chippy, Andrew. I can't expect, you know, what we've seen from Venezuela is they can get hot in a hurry. And Japan, they've got a lot of passion, pride. What do you think is going to be the X factor? Well, I think it's going to come down to defense. And uh, Japan have had their problems. They've given up 92.7 points per game. That uh, ranks to 25th from as far as slowing people down. And this Venezuela team, they've got some talent. Nesta Colmenares has been strong with putting points on the board. Gali Soho, we've seen him uh, also be able to uh, explode in short bursts. And I think that this team here, this Venezuela team, it just comes down to their attitude and how they're going to approach it. Is we to take a look at Nesta Colmenares, the nine and a half points, three assists and the seven rebounds. He's a banger. He's an undersized big that can shoot the ball. And he's going to be important for Venezuela to put points on the board. Yeah, last outing for Colmenares, by the way, 16 points, 12 boards. That was the first time since 2006 Venezuela had a player with more than 15 and 10 rebounds. Well, Gali Soho was averaging 14 points a game. The last game we saw him play last night, he he was cold. Only had the one field goal made, and they need him to score. So. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see Fernando Duro, how he works his roster. Only got the 10 available players. That, that, and that's more than enough. Usually at these games, you, you really only got a, a rotation of nine. It's just that if someone gets hurt and the balance of your team, they'll miss Michael Carrera. There's no doubt about that. He was a real presence. And for Japan, they've been able to distribute the ball around. They've got four players averaging in double figures. And... One of the, the highlights of the tournament so far was that performance against Finland by Yuki Kawamura, who had the 25 points and nine assists, and their starters. They fixed it up a little bit, but by and large, Kawamura, he's, he's been there. Watanabe, we know how good he can be. And Yudei Baba, he's a spark at both ends. And Joshua Hawkins, he'd be one of the candidates for MVP the entire tournament with the way that he's been going about it. He has been an absolute sensation. Just look at the numbers. 12 rebounds, equal leader in the tournament for rebounds. And with those 23.3 points per game, he is number four on the list of highest point scorers in the tournament, which is uh, currently held by Luka Doncic, who's averaging the 30 piece. And he's got a little Batman and Robin action going on here with Utah Watanabe, the 28-year-old who plays or will be playing for the Phoenix Suns. We saw his best performance come out against Australia. You see his numbers on the screen. Yeah, exactly. And, and with Watanabe, the, the strange thing about it, in the win that they had, that was one of his lower scoring outputs. Only made a couple of field goals and, and didn't reach uh, double figures. So... It, they can work without him, but they clearly are a much better team when he's at, at, at full strength and, and shooting the ball. He's renowned for his three-point shooting, where he shot it above 30%, excuse me, above 40% from the NBA three-point line uh, with all those athletes running around in the M NBA with the Brooklyn Nets last season. So he is uh, a, a very important piece to what happens with Japan. And as you mentioned, that there's just a... If you just look at the body language as we've watched these teams warm up the last hour or so, there's uh, no doubt that if you're, you're looking at the excitement and the adrenaline and the intensity of what you see from Japan, it does look marginally ahead of what we've seen from Venezuela. Well, Venezuela, too, we have to point out, they were playing about 24 hours ago here on the same court, so very little rest between games. Japan, meanwhile, having an off day in between this contest. And so we'll see how that will come into play for for Coach 
Duro squad here. Let's listen in. Venezuela winless here, but Tom Hovas on the other side. He's saying his team is just getting started. In fact, Guadanabe in his last performance finally started to look like himself again. He was battling injuries. They were nagging. Mm. And so Coach Hovas said that this is a group that's starting to believe in each other, and that belief is more than surface level. Things are starting to add up and click for this unit. Well, it is, and I think that uh, shooting really is really important and the percentages where they do that at you look at japan they've been really good from the two-point area they've, in fact they're 61.5 percent from twos and only 27 percent they're actually 29 in three-point field goal percentage which is low when you consider japan Usually their strength is the three ball, but they've been able to get to the rim. Something that Venezuela have not been able to do. Venezuela, uh, they don't go to the free throw line. Yeah, they only average 12 free throw attempts a game, and that's indicative of the way they play. They shoot a lot of threes, and they got to find that balance against this jacked up, excited Japanese fan base. So Wendy Gratterall in the circle to jump against Hawkinson here, and Japan gets the jump. Kiyojima with the ball. Everyone's in motion. Kawamura driving, dishing to Watanabe, lets it fly and hits for three. Well, he hasn't been able to get it going from the three-point line. This could be that night. He's more than capable, and that was a good, confident-looking stroke to start this one off. Yen shaking, baking, kicking. His buddy, Soho, will counter. Yen's giving Yojima some trouble here. Baba driving. Tried to get too fancy with it. Colmenares heading towards the block. Ball tipped away. Hiajima. And a foul handed over to try and stop the play. Windy Gratterall. It isn't. The way it was worked out, it was a good foul. They were going to be in transition. There we see Soho, like I said, coming off a, a tough outing. Last night in a real quick turnaround. Sometimes you're a little concerned when you've got that quick turnaround, but when you've had a, a downer, sometimes that get back out, trying to right the wrong straight away can be a good feeling, particularly when you come out and knock down your first three ball. Kawamura driving. Hiyajima going baseline now. He'll stick with it. Reverse on the other side, a miss. Kawamura almost had it. Soho to Gient. Trying to stay in a bounds instead is a turnover. Well, they burp it up 13 times a game, which is not bad. They're around that 12 to 14 a game, you know, obviously you want less, but that's somewhat tolerable. Kawamura here fouled. Two quick ones for Venezuela on the board. Starting on the bench on your screen there is uh, Keisei Tomonaga. A young gun that's been able to show us his firing power. said Yuki Kawamura, that game against Finland, 25 points, nine assists, and the emotion that he brought in almost single-handedly won it for Japan. 
And that's what has earned him two starts following. Look at him on defense. And the defense earning the turnover. They're engaged. The pressure in the backcourt. And really there's a, a size differential, but just the tenacity of Kawamura and the ball pressure in the backcourt forces another turnover. Baba gets taken away. Colmenares. Lots of traffic. Nobody's feet planted, so a foul against Japan. Kawamura, who was the last line of defense, had the big fella. Colmenares going straight at him. And again, another good job just to stop the plate and don't concede the easy two. Colmenares, baseline kick. Kubion making sure his feet are behind the line. Kawamura backdoor feed. That one denied by Gratterall. Flashing is Guillen, Soho. One look take with the left. Well, that's twice. Yuday Baba's being met at the rim. Tiajima, three, looks good. Japan. Perfect from the three-point line. Kubion to Palmanera, spinning, right hook. He gets it over Watanabe. Baba to Hawkinson. Enough space. That one goes off back rim. Japan gets another shot at it. Kawamura just going wherever he wants. Gratterall reading that. Two blocks for Gratterall. Soho, floater, drops in. Shooter's touch. Surprised he's not going to the line for the N1. There was a flat out attempt to stop that. Bob on the other end. Bob up, Bob up now 0 for 3. And all good. Action at the rim. Here we see the block. Now watch Soho and watch the reach in. It was just an attempted foul. Bubba put his hand up to let him know that he grabbed him. And then it's no whistle. Bubba gets subbed out on the floor now is Yoshi in his place. One point game. Colmenares. Wanted the blocking foul, no whistle, left alone, Watanabe. Dian threads it to Colmenares, no help defense. Really well executed play. Good screens. What a contact. What a now, babe. A miss from the free throw line. Ball goes down to Colmenares. Inside, outside look. Short. Recovered. Stepping through now. Kubion makes him pay. Mm -hmm. It is, and the O boards becoming an issue. The kick out gives him another crack at it. Kawamura, deep misses. And Soho here, getting everything going. Kubion tries the baseline look. Hawkinson, and we have a whistle, so play of action will stop. Yeah, they're going to stay there. I think it was on the rebound attempt. Took Cullen Mares out. Here we see the kick out for the three ball, and 
similar to Japan, Venezuela almost even with their threes to two ratio, almost 50-50. They'll take just as many threes as they, as they do twos. Fresh shot clock here for Venezuela. Colmenera is going towards the block. Trying to work through Watanabe, doesn't work. The feed up to Hawkinson, what? Oh, perfect feed by Togashi. Colmenera is spinning, hook deflected. Watanabe, get out of here, kid. He keeps him the shake of the head as well. Not in my house. A takeaway through the drive, the end. Decides to pull it up on the elbow. Yuki Togashi, the 30-year-old, now running point for Japan. Pretty fearly shot over everybody in this tournament. <laughs> Off the bench, producing. Well, he's the shortest player in the entire tournament is Togashi but he can shoot the three ball. And this started early on in the tournament. Soho, top of the key, contested. Colmenares. And Venezuela with another shot here. It's gonna be a fouling call. On Hawkinson, just tried to show a little bit too much, but here's the the play, a little give and go, and not sure if that's in the scouting quarter. And in fact, I am sure that you don't go underneath Kubion there, going underneath on Tagashi and pays the penalty. And that was on the oh, get what an old eh? No, sir, not here, not tonight. And he's been good, active on the boards. He's got the five points and four rebounds and looks engaged. The block shot and a steal. You can hear the crowd starting to get into this. Churio feeding Ruiz, extra pass out. Corner look by Matterin off. So Gashi getting tripped up, loses his handle. Soho, the trailer. Two new turnovers. Nine points for Soho here in the first. That's got him going. And that's dangerous. He's one of their prime movers. Watanabe here from the wing. Opened up with a big one. His first shot. Kubion, in and out, and board number five for Watanabe. Maybe that's six, we gotta keep a tracker on him. Tominaga, in and out. The fans on their feet though, because this guy lit it up a couple nights ago. Oh, well he did, and he's got that Steph Curry type range. Soho showing he can ball too. 12 points for Soho. His team out in front by six. And that's right, and against Georgia, he was just a non-factor. And now that he's seen it, he go in. He's a handful. Tommy Naga, a miss. It's a poor shot. Julia, right in front of him. Julio taking Hawkinson off the dribble. Tommy Naga gives it right back. The finishing transition from Utah, Watanabe. This has been an up and down, free flowing affair. No one's really getting any advantage in Japan. It's five of 17, only 29%, and only trail it by four. So Venezuela not being able to establish an advantage despite shooting it at 42% themselves. Thank you. 
A nice give and go. Hominaga seeing that there's going to be a size advantage to what an eight. And then Soho doing just a little bit of everything for Venezuela. He's the trans, I think, for Japan. And they haven't been helped by the, the four turnovers. Let's put some pressure on them as we hold up to do up a shoelace. But just you can see that Venezuela, they're in their comfort zone when they can get out and run. And in the half court, it's been a, a little bit more of a challenge for them. Under 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Louise and company covering the rebound. Shot clock's off. Again, ball in his hand. Churio driving, dishing, and an offensive foul as he pushes off. Ooh. Look at the amusement on the drive. Churio. And well, he got called for the offensive foul, the ease at which Venezuela have been able to get into the paint would be a concern as well for Japan. Didn't get it off. So that's the buzzer after the first 10. It is Venezuela up by four, 19 to 15. It is, and it's a quarter that Japan will look back on and realize that they've had some good looks. The execution was pretty good. Four turnovers is too many. In fact, both teams coughed it up four times. In fact, Venezuela five times. Just the shooting percentages of Japan. Five of 18, only 28%. That's some good action. And it all got underway. A perfect way for Japan with Watanabe knocking down the first three. But it was this guy on your screen there, number six. Soho, who started to get it going. He was five or six from the field, 12 points, and three rebounds. He was the main culprit, the main scorer. So 19 of 12 of the 19 coming from Soho's hands, and they seem in transition as well. Soho, by the way, has scored in double figures now in three of his four games in FIBA World Cup play. And this guy, Watanabe, has blocked a shot in each of his five contests on the World Cup stage. It's the longest sequence amongst all Japanese players over the last 30 years. And you know what? We need to tell our producers, we want to see some of those big blocks on the, the, yeah. the highlight reel here in between quarters. But for those of you guys that have not downloaded the Courtside 1891 app, go ahead, scan the QR code on your screen right now. Make sure you've got the app on your phone. You can have all those scores, schedules, streams at the, in the palm of your hand. Back to action here in Okinawa Arena. Despina Barton alongside FIBA Hall of Famer, Andrew Gaze. Culminaires and, and company here with the lead. Jose Mataran on that drive to open things up. And like we saw in that first quarter, we mentioned that penetration into the paint. All too easy. Watanabe, excuse me, Yoshi. Keeping things alive for Japan. Two to shoot. Yoshida, the lefty, lets it fly. Hawkinson, how about another gobble at it? Well, that's what he's known for. Josh Hawkinson averaging 12 points a game. And he, Venezuela have got it, done a good job of, of guarding him. He's yet to score. He's got two boards. And give a lot of credit to Venezuela, but also discredit. You see Watanabe get some time on the bench. Discredit Japan for not playing through him a little bit more. Hawkinson's got to see the ball. Kogashi driving, tiptoeing along that baseline there. And we'll shake the end, and it's off. 
What a monster rebound there was Yoshi. Just didn't pay off. Wow, they've had some great looks. The Ant trying to work off the screen from Ruiz. Gives it back. Matterin will travel. See the coach on the sideline saying, Matterin, shoot the ball. That's what they've predicated their game on. It's been on about the three ball, and they let it fly. Around the horn we go with Japan. Yogashi's three, no go. Churio skips it up to Zamara. And again, we'll do a little shake and bacon. A takeaway here for Venezuela. Matterin on the block and the foul. He gets an and one chance. Well, it's really hard when you're creating good shots and you just can't make them. Five of 25 now for China, uh, Japan, sorry. And Japan, uh, what they're doing is that they're getting good looks and even around, around the basket, they're powering it up and just can't make the easy ones. And that's just, it can be infectious. You, you, you miss a few and it starts to play on the minds of your teammates and that seems to be what happened here they're two of 12 from twos three of 12 from the three-point line and i think if you japan you've got to just stay with it stay with it don't try and create something different because you're just getting good looks you just got just not making them so what an abe back on the floor and you have kawamura running point again for japan a change up here by tom hovas Hawkinson comes to the ball. Oh dear. Off its mark. And that's a, another example. Hawkinson, we've seen him knock down a couple throughout the tournament. That's not beyond him, but it's about when you shoot him as well. That one was a rushed one. Plenty of time left, and you can see Venezuela were backing right off, and they're going to make him make a couple before they really start to close out too hard on him. Soho back on the floor for Venezuela. Pulmonaris. Having his team space things out. He wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Open look for Zamora. Zamora, by the way, as he got a tip in from Pulmonaris. He, we saw him hit a three-quarter court yeah. buzzer beater earlier in the tournament. Kawamura gets stripped. Just saw the hesitation. Kawamura spinning. Again, back-to-back -back -back buckets. And Coach Tom Halvas is calling a timeout. His team down by 12. Yeah, and, and really, you just need to settle down. And you, you can't get, you can't get gun shot. So we see Kawamura is down low. Power move. That last possession, Yuki Kawamura, just the hesitation, the shot, then the passive dribble in. They get a hand in, another turnover, gets Venezuela running. Well, coach, you can see Tom Hobos just expressing his frustration. And it's all good and well <laughs> to not want air balls. They're not intentionally trying to shoot air balls. It's the occasion, the opportunity, and what's at stake. That can have effect as well. And a, a chance to be qualify for the Olympic Games in Paris next year. That's what's on the line here for Japan as 
They're trying to become the highest placed Asian team when you've got already China get to win a game, the Philippines, Iran. Japan already have one in the bank. And they Looking to ask see this insurance. one as, as, as a very winnable game for them. Piajima, that one goes in out of the timeout. Couldn't have asked for more. I watched Tom Kovas there, and he just breathed a huge sigh of relief to see that one go in. Ant in the corner. Colmenares kicks it. Open look for Zamara. Misses. Another chance here. Another O board for Venezuela. In congestion. Colmenera is the superstar here of the second quarter. Six points and a chance to add one more. Yeah, they've got a, a whole bunch of problems that they've got to try and solve right now. And one of them is the O boards. It's the fifth offensive rebound. Get on the way to Venezuela. And although they were playing last night, Venezuela, they look really engaged and, and fresh. And fresh and excited. That wasn't the case less than 24 hours ago. And even when we saw them warming up, Andrew, you kind of picked up yeah. on the two different demeanors as Kawamura will have an and one opportunity on the, from the free throw line. But maybe I'm thinking now they were just trying to preserve their energy. Yeah, just making sure that they they focused in. We've got away to a really good start here. Yeah, but you've got to remember this Japanese team early on in the third against Finland, they were 18 points down and caught fire. And it was that period there, which has been a bit of an anomaly, really, where they were knocking down everything from the three-point line. Outside of that 14 or 16 minutes of basketball from Japan, they haven't shot it well from the three-point line, only 27% on the tournament. And here again this evening, they're doing it hard at 4 of 14. Whoa! A takeaway. Yoshi will take it himself and draw one. The end saw the double team coming. He tried to pass it to Gratterall, and Gratterall wasn't looking. And Gantz, crafty enough with the ball, has got the ball hand and skills. I don't even know why he'd be wanting to make that advance pass to Gratterall, the, the five man, and make him a playmaker. Just go around the defense and take control. Wasn't like there was enormous ball pressure. And a Venezuela timeout. Well, this 10-point deficit is, is not new for Japan. They've been down by more than 10 points in each of their last nine games in FIBA World Cup. And they won against, as I mentioned, Finland a few nights ago when they trailed it by 18. So they have been in this situation consistently, unfortunately for them. And they have proven that they can fight their way out of it. An 8-3 run after the Tom Hovas timeout. And Yoshi misses the free throw. So seven point margin. Yoshi on top of Soho. And he's mad about that when he gets whistled for the foul. 
And you've got to be careful to be too demonstrative in the way in which you disagree with the official. And you got a, a, a little warning, and he's getting another one, getting a, a speaking to. So listen, enough of that. Now, I know Yudo Bubba got off to a, a rough start, but he's one in these circumstances. I think it's almost time to get him back into the action. He's been 16 a game. He'll be on with four to shoot. I oh, just thought so bad. There's the release. Kawamura eyes down court. A kick. Hiyajima, top of the key. Colmenero is finding himself in open lane. Going to play with it a little bit more here. Loose ball. Soho has it. Oh. Oh. Great feed in to Watanabe. Kawamura to Watanabe. Zamora pull up three, hits it in the eye of Kawamura. Lead back out to eight. Yajima there fouled on the drive, and you named it, or I guess you called it, Andrew. Yude Baba checking back in. It is, and what a sweet move by Kawamura. And it's not just the, the spin, but Knew he had his man, what an obo running. And that's a bonus. Those easier transition baskets for Japan, they've been few and far between in this contest. So anytime they can get out and push it, and get some action on the rim early, it's going to be helpful. Wilmer threads it to Hawkinson. He's blocked from behind. A traveling call here. Excuse me, a charge, a charge by Soho. He picked the right, right way. Hiyajima just held his ground. He guessed the right way. He read the offense, and <laughs> the fans love it. And Soho here now exiting the game. Going to take a breather. That was his second personal foul. And now in the bonus, the rest of the way here in the second quarter, Japan will go to the free throw line. Kawamura trying to beat him, and he does! Just pace. So there's some horns action, and Kawamura comes off, and look, no help. Gratterall, that is the good old-fashioned Matador defense where he just waved at him, and it's really hard. This time it was... Kubian trying to guard him, and he's had to deal with two screens. He's fighting over the top, so he knows he's got a shooter, and he needs more help. You can't expect Kubian to get around the two screens, and you've got someone with the pace of Kawamura. So, great roll there. He needs to help. And they're the sort of defensive breakdowns that have happened just too many times for Venezuela. It's the reason why they are, or one of the main reasons why they're also winless. Kubion gets it inside. Gratterall, a kick around the horn. This shot, but Kubion in the right place. Safonte is now trying on the wing, and that one's good for three. I reckon that's the third time that an O board has resulted in a made three for Venezuela. The time it was a lucky one, a long band bounce out, but they've got to start getting their fair share of those. Baba under the basket, takeaway. Colmenero is reading the pass. Zamora losing the handle as Buddy Kubion and Safonte is trying to finish the trick. 
They won't. Outlet pass, Baba. We'll wait for the rest of the crew to show up. Kawamura to Watanabe, lefty top of the key, off back rim, and a collision underneath. Well, I won't get a stat, but the work that Colmenares is doing to kick Josh Hawkinson off the glass, and that time again, he just sought him out. Whenever a shot goes up, they're putting a body on him and making it really tough for Hawkinson. Hawkinson's yet to score. Hiojima steps off, Tominaga on. Colmenares, a miss. Kawamura calling out the play. He'll get fouled from behind, and Kubion has his hands up in the air. <laughs> That's going to be the third personal foul for Cubion. And Yuki Kawamura on the free throw line, the 22-year-old point guard who's gotten the start for Japan in the last two outings. And again, I had some sympathy for Cubion. He tries to fight over the top of the screen, which you, you have to do because Kawamura has been knocking down the three ball. And as he goes around, not a lot of help, and he can just snake dribble, keeps the defender on his back, and draws the foul. Ten points for Kawamura. Japan now, again, they go into their extended defense. Modern here surveying. Stefantes with the ball, asking for some help. He'll drive in, kept it high, was way off its mark. Watanabe with the extra pass to Tommy Naga. That's good for all three. Japan tightening the lead. They're down by three. It is, and these are the plays. Wananobe does a good job of intimidating the shot and then the kick out pass to his shooter in the corner. The lefty, nothing but cotton. And Tamanaga is not who you want to see get red hot if you are Venezuela. They call a timeout. Coach Duro is going to talk things over. So 2.03 to play here in the second quarter. Venezuela is going to try and slow the roll of a red hot Japanese squad. It is, and they've worked their way back into this one. After by trailing it by as many as 10, not too, only a few minutes ago. A couple of three balls. And this man here again, Kawamura, has been an important part of it all. And this is a fun electric atmosphere in Okiwana, Okinawa. The trap coming, bouncing. Venezuela escapes. Cervantes is feeding to Gratterall. An offensive foul. And really good rotation. There was a hard show on the on-ball screen. And Yudo Baba recognizes that. And he catches the roll-up. Gets in the right spot. Gratterall just can't 
put the brakes on quick enough. Offensive foul. Another turnover. Nine turnovers. Hawkinson throws it right to Gratterall, who's trying to go between his legs, and it's a turnover for Japan. So back on defense they go. Sofontes all day to draw the trigger, and he hits it. Three more for Venezuela. Huminaga creating the lefty jumper, misses on the baseline. It will stay with Japan. Here we look at that kick out again. That's the second made three. Palomura, pull up jumper, short. Sabantes walks this up for Venezuela. Behind the screen, he thought about it. Zamora comes for it. Grotto helps with the screen. And Zamora will do a Tough. helter skelter off the elbow. Well, he's done most of his dummy damage throughout the tournament from the three point line. And Japan are aware of it, so they close out hard. And he said, Well, I've got a mid range game as well. In the corner once again, this one off its mark. Tominaga just a little ahead of himself. Mattern travels. It's going to give the last shot to Japan for the half and Tom Hovas wants to talk it over, set up a play. And it's a tough one. Who do you go to? Because no one's really got it going. 30% from the field. Very hard to win games of basketball when you're only shooting at 30%, which has been the issue for Japan. And I think on this one, Watanabe's got to be involved in the action. Real simple action, and it's just relying on the pace of Kawamura and pretty much stationary. So he's going to have three options. He's got the two guys in the corner, and then the kick back out the top. I couldn't see who was the identifiable player. It might have been Tomonaga that they want coming out. So Kawamura to Hawkinson. They get it over just fine. We're driving with Baba. Easy two on the oh. left, and he has a chance to add one more. I like the action. Venezuela try to blow the play up. They know they're going to something special, so they try to blow the play up with a double team in the backcourt, but they get it over the head of Venezuela, and then they've got a numerical advantage, and a clip on the head by Colmenares sends Baba to the free throw line and showing his frustration. And it's worth the gamble because you're expecting Japan to wait for the last three or four seconds and not go early. So they gamble and the gamble didn't pay off. But the logic behind it made sense, but the execution was just poor. That was Baba's first bucket of the game. A 28 year old now on the free throw line after putting up 15 points against Germany. This guy spent some time in the G League too, right? Yeah, yeah. and in Australia. Won an NBL title with Melbourne United. And playing in the G League with the Rio Vipers. He was last season where he averaged 
almost 12 points a game. Home Harris to Stefantes lets Watanabe jump right over him, and there's nothing there. At the end of the first half, it is Venezuela up by five. It's 41 36. It is, and based on the really poor shooting and the eight turnovers by Japan, Venezuela, well, they'll be happy they're up, but they'll realize that they let an opportunity go because. Japan was struggling to throw it in the ocean for a while there. And eventually towards the end, they started to get things going. And, and there it is on the stats, 32% for Japan in total, 45% in total for Venezuela. And Venezuela haven't helped themselves either with the turnovers. Have a look, 10, there it is at the bottom. Rebounding count slightly in favor of Venezuela. And the three-point shooting for both teams has been a little below par, but particularly for Japan with five of 18, only 28%. But I think that it was just a hint of momentum that the tide was turning for Japan in the last three or four minutes of that second period. And for Japan, you've not seen Josh Hawkinson get activated. He has zero points here in the first half. So whatever we're seeing from Venezuela and what their focus was, certainly yep. taking him out of this contest in the first 20 minutes. Soho, alive early and often. And Watanabe here with nine points already. And I believe, what are we at? Five rebounds now? Five rebounds to go along with those nine points. It is, and there was some good action at both ends that wasn't always rewarded with points. Soho had his 12, but 12, his 12 ball came in the first quarter. Took him out just before quarter time and, and wasn't able to get it going after that. And Colmenares is the other one. He's been solid around the basket. He's got picked up 11 points, has six boards, and he's been really active. And just the shooting of Japan is, is something that you, know, you can draw up all the greatest plays in the world, but if you can't make baskets, and Hiyajima came in and knocked down a couple, and, and when that is happening, these types of baskets become more important, and that is getting out in transition, creating turnovers, and, and that's why you heard, we saw Tom Hovos really encourage his players to pick up. He's trying to generate some transition baskets off some turnover, points off turnovers, uh, but... You know, you can, like I said, you can have the greatest game plans in the world and get good shots, but if you can't knock them down, you're going to struggle. But that man there came in and gave a real boost. That's Safontes to Venezuela with a couple of made threes. And although there's a five-point advantage to Venezuela, it seems evenly poised. Uday Bubba, who's had a rough start. Turnovers and missed shots, but he finished on a positive note with a three-point play. Yep, and it's a five-point ball game here at the half. It's Venezuela 41, Japan 36. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, we are stronger. No matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Gets rejected. Well, when you Gabriel with the rib protection. Almeida. And the pass knocked away this time. Doncic with the steal. Oh. Kick out. The finish. Rebelic. <laughs> Bine Prepelic there. There's two Prepeliches on the floor. They're cousins. Uh, turnover waiting to happen, but guess he's picked it up. China. It's a wide open look for the perimeter. 
puts it right between the legs again. Oh, baby! That is officially Buenas Noches. Hey, coach, that's what a smile out of you. Let me tell you something right now. The magician, well, watch the nutmeg. You missed the nutmeg. Finds Romero. He goes walk up again. Hands it off to the Campo for the jump! Great awareness from walk up. Bohm's trying to stay in front of Doncic. He's spinning, fade away on the left. Glass helps him out. Doncic now with 19. 95% of that jump is a really good job. The power's going to have to put it up from the logo. And knocks it down. I'm not sure that was what coach drew up, but it doesn't matter anyway. It's just time to see him say, whoo. Tavares right into Doncic's hands. Doncic, Euro, extra pass, summer. Doncic to summer. Nice read, wasn't it? He knew he had the two in front. Luka Doncic looks a slightly perturbed. He is, and clearly he's not happy with his form. One of nine from the field. You can look at his numbers there. 12 points, and now Banquero for the throwdown. Well, they went to that middle isolation for him, and he went to work. Nice spin and dunk. Oh, and that was a telegraph pass. Look at the behind the back pass. Oh, goodness. Soaring through the air. We're back at Okinawa, Japan, halftime. Venezuela out in front by five. And this guy, Garly Soho, able to do a lot of work in the first half. And as you noted, Andrew, all of his points coming in the first quarter. Well, that's right. He got off to a fly up and it took him out. He was asking for a rest at the end of the first. And, and when he came back in, I think get those the same opportunities in transition and also give Japan some credit. Started a lot tougher closeout and he's got a nice stroke, real bouncy, 23 years of age. He's got a very bright future and a long career with Venezuela, you would think. And you know, look at the, the numbers and five or seven, that's really good shooting. And you look at the shot chart, two or four from the three point line. Japan, well, it's game. One of the little fellas, Yuki Kawamura, with the 10 points. Get to the rim. Might have got a little lucky that one. That was partially blocked. But he's also renowned for shooting the long ball. That's the one we just saw. Got a piece and might have actually helped it go in that time. But if you go underneath the screens, you're going to have trouble, so you're going to fight over the top. Kubian fighting over the top. Gratterol, that is the all-lay defense. And he goes through, no other help to be seen anywhere. And that pace, that quick pace, the step. Went to the line for an end one on that one. So he's been solid. He's been the most consistent scoring option, two or four from the field. And the rest of the work is a perfect six of six from the free throw line. So he and Watanabe are the main guys that's from a scoring standpoint for Japan. And there could have been a few others along the way. It's just that they can't, can't put the ball in the basket, have one of those nights. And hopefully it, for them at halftime, they regroup and 
see if they can't get a bit more going offensively. I was telling, well, when I was walking by their locker room moments ago, you know my routine, I have to make my rounds around the arena during the halftime break. You could hear the message from Tom Hovas in the hallway. It was a colorful one, Andrew, really? I'll tell you that. And if that doesn't inspire this group, I'm not sure what will. But I imagine that the unit that's going to come out and the way they're going to play here in the third quarter is going to be something, uh, certainly a, a, of adjustments. Well, that's right. And well, if you're Venezuela, you'd be reasonably content with what's happened. And also the history, Venezuela have won six of their nine games in which they were leading at halftime. So statistically, the odds are in their favor based on the evidence uh, of their recent cup history. Not an unusual place for Japan. This is actually the 12th time that Japan is losing at halftime in a FIBA World Cup in the 21st century. They've won just one of their previous 11, but it was in this year's tournament, and it's that famous win, the 98-88 win over Finland after being down by 10 at the break, by as many as 18 in the third. And they actually created history in that game because it's the first time in their history they have ever beaten a European team in World Cup action. So it was a momentous occasion and it was just full of emotion. There were tears in the crowd. There was tears by the players and it was a privilege to be in the venue to see it unfold. But Venezuela, they don't want any part of that happening to them. And you see that Soho with the 12, Guillent with the three assists, and Colmenares with the six boards to go along with his 11 points. If you're just joining us, we're here in Okinawa. This is Japan taking on Venezuela in the classification round. But for Japan, these are high, high stakes because they are competing against the rest of the Asian continent here yeah. as far as the World Cup play goes to be able to get an automatic bid to the 2024 Olympics. The, the highest finishing team will go. From each zone and from the Asian zone, they're up against the Philippines, China, which we mentioned, and Iran and Japan. And the highest ranked team at the end of this tournament will be the one that gets that automatic bid. So there's a lot at stake. They've already got credit points because they've got one win over a European nation, so that'll hold them in good stead. But this is a game that they would be thinking that they can get an advantage as we take a look at the energy tracker. And Hawkins played all but one minute in that game. The energy tracker refers to the minutes on the floor. And Hawkinson is he's a workhorse in the middle. And for Venezuela, Soho with the 13. Colmenares has done the heaviest lifting. Played 15 minutes, and well, wouldn't you when you're putting up 11 points and six boards? A high quality first half at Colmenares. Venezuela, they have a slim margin and out in front by five here. And we're going to see what Coach Duro drew up for this unit as they're looking for their very first win of World Cup play this year in this tournament. Let's try and listen in. So Japan, room to make up. They're the host nation making their sixth World Cup appearance. We saw them earlier this week at their first victory over a European team. They're the only Asian team competing in the World Cup with one win. If they, they're able to add one on today and the next day, their chances are just heightened that they'd get that bid to the Olympics. Well, that's right. And, and if I'm Japan, very first set, I'm trying to get Hawkinson involved. He needs to see a ball, pick and roll, or even just put him on the box. Whatever action you have in your, your sweeter sets that get him going. And 
get to score in this one. He's the fourth leading scorer in the tournament. And he's a big part of what they're going to do. Bradderol has got the assignment on him and I have to say, Venezuela is taking him out of the contest. So third quarter underway, Despina Barton alongside Andrew Gaze. We're watching the 2023 FIBA Men's World Cup. First shot to Baba. And it's going to be knocked out by Japan. Well, they did play through Hawkinson. Got him a touch early. Colmenera. Again, he'll drive in mid range floater, drops in. That's really been his bread and butter throughout the tournament. He's been good at it, just dribbles in, finds his spot around that free throw line. He's got great touch. Hiojima live on the right, misses. The last did not help. Zamora, corner, short. Ball touched a lot of different hands here. And Guillent will pick it up. Oh. Coleman Harris nearly steps across back court. Soho will try to recover the broken play. Hawkinson. And he's instantly fouled by Colmenares. And that's Colmenares being smart. He knows that he's been struggling. And he doesn't want to see him make a field goal. Overplays the middle. And the, well, the powered drop step by Hawkinson put Colmenares out of position. And that's going to be, it's only his first, excuse me, his second personal foul. So he sacrifices one and says to Hawkinson, well, you might going to get him, but you're not going to get him easy. Sends a message, and he goes to the line, splashes the first. Snags yeah. them both. And he's an excellent free throw shooter. 27 of 30 in the tournament so far at 90%. Oh! Passes the more tip to Colmenares behind the back. The finish, no block by Arvanabe. It was his buddy Hawkinson, though, that cleaned everything up. Watanabe, and he counters. Tack on a three ball. It's a two point game. And at both ends of the floor, Watanabe getting it done. It was the block at one end. Foul, a little too aggressive. The block, the desperation block. They were playing two on one with Hawkinson. And from the weak side, Watanabe blocks it, continues to run the floor, and knocks down the three ball. Colmenara is with the left. Watanabe again from the same spot, back to back from downtown. 15 points for Watanabe. Colmenares driving at Watanabe. It's an offensive foul. Check this guy's veins. He's got ice in them. Colmenares doesn't like it. And Watanabe is having a purple patch. The last 45 seconds, it's all been Watanabe with a couple of threes, the block shot, and now the defense is sliding at the feet and forces Colmenares not only into the turnover, but he picks up his third personal foul. Hawkinson having to get it to a guard. Colmenares speeding down court, feeds it back to Hawkinson. Off to the races now, the other end. 
Soho will shoot two. So some firepower on the floor. How hard is it? You saw Venezuela trying to pick up full court and get it a, a double team on Kalamua. How quick did he get it over the center line? And there's the pressure on Soho. 9,000 fans screaming against you. Got to go to hold your nerve and make sure you just don't get caught up in the noise and go through your fundamentals. Easier said than done. Japan's trying to make sure that they're doing as much as they can to help out Japan. Kawamura to Hawkinson. One dribble up, misses. Soho turning on the Jets on his end. Oh, Yudai Baba's hurt. He ran into the support. Now push off on the other end, but you're right down here. An offensive foul, too, to add salt to the wound. And Hawkinson said, call for a push off. And he looks in, he, he, I saw him collide into the support. And I've seen this guy play for a long time, and he's not the sort of guy that will go down and stay down unless there's something. Pretty significant. There's the push in the back. Mataran might have just exaggerated the contact. But still, turnover. And down the, here, there you see the collision. And it just landing might have clipped the support. He's saying. Taking a bit of time to. Him to get up. And the medical staff helping him up. He's going to have to check out of the game. I think he thought he was going to come back in. And this is part of his routine. The ultimate respect. Whenever he gets subbed out, he comes and just bows. And he's been doing that no matter where he plays. Very respectful, fine. Young man, great athlete. I hope we'll see more of him here in this contest. Venezuela, four point lead. Mint from NBA range, miss his buddy Ruiz with the rebound. Zamora behind the screen. And a foul. Venezuela picking up their third personal release. And he won't get the board, but again, the desperation by what an obey. And that one just tapped the ball out to the advantage. He's made two. Whatever you got in your playbook, I'm going back to what an obey. Kawamura driving, faking, stripped. It stays put. And going to the locker room here. He's sprinting off, and it looks like he's holding his arm, so it might have been more of an arm injury than a lower body injury. Kawamura with five to shoot. Hits up. Yoshi on the block. <laughs> One possession game. Soho would travel. They're going to say he had control of the ball here. Wow. That's a interesting one. It looked like he just fumbled the ball. If you fumble, you can recover, but I guess from what we heard from the official, he thought he slid with it.
A chance here for Japan to take the lead. Watanabe pulls the trigger top of the key. Maybe a heat check of sorts. Zamora driving, floater, good for two. Shushes the fans here inside Okinawa Arena. Watanabe spotted up, gonna let it fly. Yoshi's off. Tominaga fighting for the rebound. He'll keep it with Japan. Yoshi, extra pass. Hawkinson gonna go back. Hawkinson just can't get anything. It's like it's in his head now. He's, he's rushing some shots, which you normally think just he gathers himself and powers it back up, but he's in his own head starting to see things that probably aren't there right now as he tries to work through some battles. Churio now on the floor for Venezuela. Kawamura driving in. Nothing there. Churio, a little pump fake. Gonna give it to Zamora in the corner. Watanabe just changing gears. Stripped away by the youngster. Soho gets it back. Strong take and a whistle. Wow. And it was the official under the basket that didn't call. It was the official furthest away that called it. And it was almost looked like similar actions that we saw down the other end. And that's all ball. Well, they called it for a push, not with the hand. And it was the same type of action that they didn't call them. What an obey down the other end. Man, just... If you come to watch it, okay? And this is what I can see. So everybody's looking at Garley Soho on the free throw line. The 23-year-old will make the first one. He's averaged 10.3 points a game, four rebounds to run out the tournament. And he tracks down his own board here. Another chance for Venezuela. Well, that's inexcusable off a free throw. Just complete this lockout. The end. Come down, down. Venezuela out to an eight point lead. And Watanabe fouled here by Ruiz. He picks up his second personal. Look at the shot. Not much more Josh Hawkinson, Hawkinson can do. He closes out hard. Uses his length, and that's just a, a tough shot by Guillen. Ball taken away from Kamenaga. Right now, you can just feel that Venezuela just wants it more. Chorio, back to back three pointers for the Venezuelan squad. Tominaga, this Japanese squad could use a three. This one whiffed. They got it all the way back to four. In fact, might have cut it to two. And then just Venezuela have been on a tear. Venezuela has outscored them. 
16 to 10 here in the quarter. Listen in. We're gonna go Yonju Ichi. Yonju Ichi. All right, Yonju Ichi. Let's try to get a little steal. Try to get some momentum back. All right, Yonju Ichi to Jugo. Tired? Hey, let's go meal. Let's go meal. Another look at the ball movement here for Venezuela and Jordan Zamora placing the ball perfectly. And then Gient, Hazler Gient for the three pointer. He's also collected now 52 assists in FIBA World Cup play, at least 25 more than any other Venezuelan player since 1994. Not a whole lot of people in the stands rooting for this team, but this bench is fired up. It's a sea of red and white in here, Andrew Gaze. What it is, and now it's back out to double digits. 11 point buffer for Venezuela. Here comes the double. Gant with five to go behind Matarin. Luis treks down the board. Gant going to the lane. Extra pass, Soho. And he might. A tech foul. Yep. He's going to get called for the tech there for the extra slap. Just got caught up in the emotion. You can see the, the bounce that we were talking about before the start of the game. It's explosive. Not a lot of runway either. One step goes up does a chin up and slaps the board. You can't do that. So this will give Japan one free throw and they'll regain possession. Ooh. It goes down. Hawkinson with three points tonight and all of those stemming from the free throw line. Yudai Baba coming back in. His shoulder all taped up. And he'll get ready to inbound here. Obviously told Coach Hobas, hey, put me back in. It's a big game, a lot on the line for the Japanese squad. Tominaga wants to hit. We saw him open up in the first. He's only one of seven now from the field. Luis, quick kick. Trying to trace it down. Churio thrown away. Baba with the ball. He'll give it to Watanabe. and he wanted more. Under two to go here in the third quarter. Yen with the floater. Misses Hawkinson with the board. The kick out, Tominaga. He'll finish in transition. Back-to-back -back buckets for the home Japanese. This is where time management, clock management for Venezuela. Good momentum all back with Japan. And poor turnover. Samora thought he got fouled on the pass. He missed his target by a long, long way. Venezuela now with 14 turnovers. Back-to-back -back transition baskets. The lead cut down to single digits. Hawkinson going at Ruiz. We'll stick with it. The hook is short. Gant left alone. And he'll make him pay. Gosh, 
going out, trying to just ran into the screen. Go over the top. Watanabe now will try to counter. Yeah. No. Churio, dribble over, creating on the right. And Japan with the ball. Half of a second, the difference between the shot clock and game clock. Togashi, the 30-year-old point guard and captain for Japan with the ball. We're in motion, balls with Watanabe driving. Lefty over everybody. And the third quarter comes to a close. Japan, Japan closing in on the lead. It's now down to nine. Venezuela 62, Japan 53. Well, they did a good finish for Japan. And they get the switch. Venezuela just switch it. Watanabe with the smaller guy on him just takes him into the paint, shoots over the top of him with the easy two. But bottom line is Japan lost the quarter, 21 to 17. They've given a, a decent head start. Nine point head start now for Venezuela in this last quarter and in a real healthy position. for the point guard for Venezuela. Again, Venezuela is playing without two of its, its key players. And Watanabe, not real consistent, but when they've needed a big shot, he's been there for Japan. No, that's right. And the veteran, no Gregory Vargas, and no Michael Carrera. And there's Watanabe. He came out to start that third in white hot form. Couple of three balls, some block shots. There was the injury for Yudo Baba. But in the end, he was the floor general in that quarter. I thought he did a magnificent job, called his own number a few times, but controlled the tempo, got everyone involved. And it's been any time that there's the last play of the game, but any time Venezuela has got through their motion and uh, got Japan moving, it's looked pretty good. So final 10 minutes are on the clock here in Okinawa Arena. Justina Barton alongside Andrew Gaze. And Japan with an opportunity here in this classification game to add another W to their, or at least another check mark to their win column, which would certainly help them in the Olympic qualifying consideration. Meanwhile, Venezuela they're looking to close out their first win of the tournament. 0-3 to open things up. Fighting to finish and classify those final rankings, 17 through 32. Matarin. Japan need a, a real change of fortune with their, with their shooting. In this big game, only 32% from the field. Very difficult to win games of basketball when you're only shooting at 32%. Watanabe will come forward off the curl. Churio beats everybody to the spot. Rewarded with another chance. Staying low, Watanabe frustrating Churio. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Palmenares comes in. Matarun goes out. Three fouls for Colmenares. That's why we saw him sit the majority of the third quarter. Zamora spinning, going right to the rack. And every time you think Japan's about to close out, Venezuela 
able to find a way to convert. They just can't string to get it. any offensive makes. That's a tough shot. Kawamura, that time, early on in the offense, they just can't get a consistent run on the offensive end. In contrast, Venezuela, the ease at which they've been able to score, and now the alarm bells are ringing if they weren't already. 15-point advantage after Ghent hit that jumper. We're starting to pull away here as we have some VIPs in the house. Aman Nyong, the FIBA president, and Andreas Zaklis, the FIBA secretary general, making their way here to Okinawa for some great basketball. I'd be really proud of the way in which the FIBA organization has put together this World Cup. It's been run in great spirits, really well organized, and fantastic competition. Soho back on the floor. He's had the highest scoring game. We've seen him in FIBA World Cup competition. Baba dribbling back out. Japan really needed to think about pushing the tempo. Get it up and down. Kiyajima will find a way to make it count. Three from three. Sixty-eight, fifty-eight. Hiyajima off the bench, finding an answer. That's right. We need to find a spark. We need to find someone who can get hot. And he's certainly got the capacity to do that. Well, Venezuela needs some players to step up, and there's been a few that's answered the call. One of them has been Soho. Gali Soho with the 18 points. That's the most for him in a in FIBA World Cup game. And Jian. He's got his nine assists, and it's the most for him. So at the offensive end, he had a couple of players step up, and like I said, Jian has been fantastic at running the team, distributing the ball. He's hit some big shots to go along with those nine assists. Venezuela led by five at the halftime break by as many as 15 here in the fourth quarter and now lead by 10. The end to Zamora and a foul handed over by Kawamura. That's going to be his third. He wasn't a lot in it. He stays on the floor. And a fresh shot clock here for Venezuela. The ball is knocked out, last touch by Japan. Let's do this regularly. Fans want to review. <laughs> <laughs> and the inbounds pass when it stays on that same side, they send the double team. Pass intended for Colmenar is taken away. Baba. Kawamura Lane stays open. He takes his shot. You see it drilled off seven straight points. And this is what we've been talking about is just to get some momentum, string a few together. Another stop here will make it interesting. Ball knocked out. Kawamura had a hand in it. It's a wild pass trying to 
throw it in there to Kalmanaris, and then it was just a... The seas parted. Up. It did. Turio taken away. Hiojima the feet up. Baba. Lots of traffic here. Well, it's showing some signs of getting a little nervous. No foul call on that one on the bubba as he went to the rim. Dient checks out for a quick spell. Gubion comes back in for him. Kawamura elevating top of the key, misses Trurio with the board. Six minutes to go. Venezuela up by eight. Palmeiras on the block. Soho driving, dishing it back to Palmeiras, and two more for Venezuela. And doing this while they try to get some rest, but Josh Hawkinson has had a tough night. Hiojima will call his own number, and he is feeling it. Wow. There's a quick trigger, but he's feeling it. 12 for Hiojima. Teams within seven. Churio backing down towards the block. Whoa. Thought he had Kubi on cutting, throws it away. He was I'm passing not, to you, Andrew. I'm not sure who he saw. There was no one even in close proximity to where that pass is going. And yet another sign that just a bit of nervousness out there now with Venezuela. Japan within striking distance. Hiojima left alone. This one will count for two if it drops, and it does. Oh, let's count it to five. And Hiojima has been the one that stepped up on the offensive end. Kubion to Ruiz, working around the horn. Watanabe contesting. Baba covering the rebound. Kawamura now driving left. Hiojima coming off the curl. Oh my. And he gets him the ball. Oh my. Hiojima has come to life. 17 points. And the bulk of them coming here in the last, when Japan have needed him the most. Two-point game. The threat to Colmenares. That pass. one is a silencer. A little shuffle cut action. Hiojima's pass knocked away. It stays here, 10 on the shot clock. It is, and, and Josh, here comes Hawkinson. Hawkinson comes back in, and really good minutes by Kawamata. He did a good job just to give Hawkinson a quick spell. Oh, the, the ball is in. They're trying to get this in. I, Coach Hovas is trying to get everyone's attention. Watanabe. Everybody touching this. Shoot and a it. shot clock violation. There it is. They're just oh, not aware of the shot clock. That's inexcusable at this stage of the game. Palmeiras to Soho. That one is. Oh! It looks like a block from here, but they're calling a foul here on Baba. Okay, Baba. Looks like he got that clean from behind. Once again, it's that high post action. 
a little bit of risk, I suppose. Seen a lot worse not called, but this time Soho goes to the free throw line. It's two or four. 19 points there for Garley Soho. Pushes the lead back out to six. Kawamura driving left, dishes to Hawkinson through the cut. He'll go to shoot two. What a great feed by Kawamura. Just a little punch screen at the top. Gets deep in there. And the weak side action by Hawkinson. You can see some of the scars that on his shoulders that the pressure that he's been having to deal with in this one. Excellent free throw shooter at the line. And the good thing about that, it was quick play. Didn't take too much time off the clock to pick up a couple of points. Cut it to four. And Hawkinson does his job. Guillen back on the floor to run point with Kubian. And then I like it when Guillen's there. They've been running their action off the ball, but he's been a handful for Japan. They switch. Julio trying to get it into Colmenares. So that's where they had to switch. They needed to get it back. Ruiz needed to get it straight back to Guillen. Had Hawkinson on him and let him just get down. He'll get to the rim. Create some help for the dish out. Again, needs some help. Colmenares with the ball. Soho calls for it. Nothing there. Shot clock violation. So the two shot clock violations yep. kind of cross each other out. Equalize each other. They're trying to do, you see the double team, you see Ruiz up. They're trying to keep it out of Kawamura's hands. Yeah. Watanabe gets it back to him. Hawkinson handles it. No, he's blocked. There's a whistle late on the, the play yes. here. Another one. And that look clean. Just a, didn't quite gather it. And it's a push. That's what the call is. All ball upstairs, but it's with the body and the left arm downstairs. So this is going to send... Hawkinson back to the free throw line to potentially cut it to two. Uh, they let it as, by as many as 15 in this last quarter. And it's a defensive explosion by Hiyajima. He's got Japan right back in this and just get the sense that his nervousness about what's going on for Venezuela. And Hawkinson misses one. We talk about he had Jimmy. He has scored now more three-pointers today than in his previous eight games in World Cup action. It was happening here in the fourth quarter. So single possession game. Japan picks him up full court. Palmanera is strong, dishes out to Zamora. Zamora right in the baseline, he'll pull things back out. Soho left alone, a miss, and Palmanera tips it out to his teammate. Another look, Vient rolls in and out. Watanabe now driving, will get the foul. Wow, some good looks for Venezuela. Had their shooters. And just getting a little tight. They had two cracks at it as well. Japan weren't able to get the old board. So, there they had. There's the energy tracker. And there's uh, Watanabe 
played the bulk of the game. Got a little bit of rest in that second, and that's it. Played the entire first quarter and the third. And I suspect he's going to see this one out with two minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Both go in for Watanabe. One point ball game. 2.16 to play. Kawamura here on the end. The two point guards. Soho driving, he coughs it up. Baba with the ball. He's looking for help. He finishes it to Hiyajima. <laughs> and one, Hiyajima. What a play! Japan has the lead! Ude Baba saw the defense coming, he's holding his shoulder. But look at the heads up play. Great pass off and the man of the moment. Here, Jima knocks down the two, gives him the lead and has a chance to give him a two point lead. Just well, beautifully executed by Uday Baba. Clear foul, who <laughs> is coming in late. Oh boy. Who would have thought? This packed house came here for a reason. They believe this is a program that is building on that. And Venezuela is in their way right now. Here it is, the action of this man here, here Juma. He has come on and saved it for Japan. He is single-handedly got it going. Three balls, getting to the rim. Mid-range, gets the lucky bounce. And down the other end, it was the defensive stop. And then the finish. And he's been doing all this with four fouls. It's one that Venezuela, they need to try and attack him on the offensive end. Get him out of the game. Nearly tripling his average here in scoring. He's on the free throw line now. He makes it. Japan with a two-point advantage. Yet here surveying. Soho's been the mastermind. Yet driving, free throw line extended, it's a miss. Hawkinson covering it up and handing it to Kawamura. And he's going to have the ball cleaned up here before they move forward. Big stop. Man gets the shot that he wanted. Good execution. That would have been a design play. Good ball movement. And man movement. Not able to finish. So less than 90 seconds left in this game. Japan firing back from a 15-point deficit earlier this quarter. They narrowly lead by two. Kawamura, extra pass somehow. Hiyajima picks it up, gets in the corner. Open look, Kawamura for three. Some more on the other end. He tries to answer. Whoa. He does an eye for an eye. Tom Horvath says, goes back to Kawamura and says, same again. He wants the same play. Kawamura over to Hiyajima now, baseline. And he oh. will bang, bang. Well, that made out a buy basket. 
for the first three quarters, but here in the last, they're on fire. Five-point lead for the home team. Zamora, can he answer? No. Ball tracked down. Hiyajima to Watanabe. Well, they need a quick one. Kawamura, head down, driving. He'll pull things out. He's got 10 on the shot clock. The feed to Baba. Venezuela sleeping on D. Just a 31 to 15 last quarter so far. Hiyajima is the man of the moment. Ably supported by Kawamura. And of course, what an Abe. Boy, has this been a turnaround on the offensive end. They were hovering around the 30% mark and below for much of the game in this last quarter. And they've just been transformed. Knocking down everything. Hiyajima with six made three-pointers tonight, the most ever by any Japanese player in FIBA World Cup history. Well, it's not just the six, it's the six of seven. And just an unbelievable. Have a look at the run, a 24 to nine run. Just Venezuela. Deer in the headlights in the last seven minutes of this quarter. Got off to the right start, pushed it out to 15 early in the fourth. And then basically put the cue in the rack and got nervous and haven't been able to score. And on top of that, haven't been able to get the stops. 15 in the first, 21 in the second, 17 in the third. That's been the scoring for Japan. But in the last, they've put on the board 31. So this timeout advanced the ball for Venezuela, 17.8. Zamora with the deep three that is whiffed. And it's a seven point differential here. Japan calls a timeout. <laughs> this and they is... will then advance the ball. Well, that's right. If you're going to have a turnover, you'd rather have it in the front court. And with only 13 seconds, 13.7 seconds remaining, this is about getting the inbound. Inbound and trying to run as much clock, run, away. run away, away. as much clock off right. as you can. Away. Five, one, two. Uh, Utah, Utah's here. Utah's in by me. Two, curl, in, top, Josh. Yeah, two flat. And then Josh, Josh after the pin is going to flash. Josh, you are just not the flash. Let's just get the ball in. Come on, I think I found a guy's going to hit. Found a guy's going to hit. Be strong. And, hey. Let's go score. I don't speak Japanese, but what he was referring to, if they do get it, they've got fouls to give. They've only got two team fouls. So at the end, if they lose it, Hiyajima loving his work. Utah, Utah Watanabe just getting the crowd engaged. And Yuki Kawamura is the first player with a double-double in points and assists for Japan in FIBA World Cup history. 17 points, 11 assists. His night at the office will go down in history. Watanabe here to inbound. Kawamura with the ball. And Venezuela going to... Play it out. Yeah. They're going to stay back here. Let Kawamura have the final shot. And Soho here will throw it up, but it doesn't matter because Japan and that man right there, Tom Hovas, have put together another massive comeback here to earn their second victory on the World Cup stage. Fighting and clawing from a 15-point deficit minutes ago. It's final. Japan wins 86 to 77. And there you see the emotions. And this doesn't happen anywhere other than here in front of these home fans. They trailed it by 15, all of last because they couldn't score. 
They were in the low 30s to high 20s for most of the game. They couldn't string points together. And somehow or other, on the back of Hiyajima, with that scoring onslaught to give him the sense of hope and then inspire his teammates to help chip in. And they've been able to put 33 points on the board. There you see the scoring breakdown. And just love the emotion from the fans because this is hasn't been the norm for Japan in World Cup basketball. And this win means so much for this team because it is and it means they were one step closer to qualifying for the Olympics, the 2024 games. And Tom Hovas there talked about belief, something that he got buy-in from the women's team. And it's something that's not just about mouth service, but it's about proving it with games like this and everything they do to build up this program. They've had big second half victories. Confidence is building. And this team, what we're seeing here, Andrew, in this arena, is a team that is starting to believe. It is, and uh, great things happen in an atmosphere of greatness. And what we've seen here, as far as Japan is concerned, is an atmosphere of greatness. They are doing extraordinary things, getting swept up in the hype. And let's not forget, they've got some really, really good talent out there as well. And the thing that has stuck out is they are fearless. They never give up. They've trailed in giving up some really incredible head starts and the TCL player of the game. Well, it's not a hard one. It's Hiyajima who came on and just turned it around for Japan on the offensive end. What a crowd, a sellout here in Okinawa Arena. The host nation notching their second World Cup victory here at home. Steps closer to an Olympic invitation. And at the hands of Venezuela, they crumbled to the pressure that was put on them here late in the fourth quarter. It is, and a lot of it was the cranking up of the intensity by Japan, but a lot of it was the pressure being built up in their own minds. Venezuela, once they uh, had to face the Hiyajima onslaught, they got nervous. They started to second guess themselves. And Japan, it was almost like they were playing with the house's money. And that man again, Yuki Kawamura, he was setting it up. 19 points, 11 assists, and his turn of pace to get to the rim was and has been something special right throughout. Utah Watanabe, Watanabe, he did his work as well. He finished with 21 points and eight boards. But this guy right here, the red right hand. If I have any Peaky Blinders fans out there, this guy was an assassin tonight. <laughs> He certainly was, and some of these aren't easy shots. He's coming off, move going away from the basket. Soho's right there. But when you get in that groove, and that rim starts to look like a hula hoop and the confidence is rolling, it's a beautiful feeling when you're out there. And he had it for most of that last, or well, all of the last quarter, in fact. And even when he was getting hit, He's still getting the bounces, the breaks. That was the go-ahead basket. They were a point down. And then ice in his veins after we saw a great answer by Zamora to cut it back to two. Zamora knocks it down. But that wasn't to beat because the hot hand of Hiyajima. He's having fun. Hugs all the way around, a celebration not only for the team, but its fans, this country, and a bow out of respect. They send Venezuela home packing and notch their second victory here of the tournament. Japan now on the top of Group O play. And next up for them, Cape Bird tomorrow yeah. night. They will go in as the, the favorite, but uh, this is only the second time that Japan has scored 30 or more points in the last quarter. So they're creating history all over the place. 
for the Japanese. They will remember this evening for the rest of their lives. They upset Venezuela, notch their second victory, and it's a come from behind fashion. Bang, bang, Japan, they win it, 86-77.